Hello everyone, welcome to week 8 of the Scientific Programming in Python course. This week we will continue with the Pandas library and I will cover the topics of cleaning data and analyzing data uh, as well as explorative data um, yeah, analysis and just yeah, working with data in, inside Pandas. Okay, firstly I want to cover um, cleaning data with Pandas just very briefly because um, we want to have two lectures on pandas and this is the second one and yeah there are lots of things you can do with pandas and um, yeah for that matter we want to have a little less focus on cleaning the data but still want to mention uh, how that works and some very important functions there are so what is cleaning data um, whenever you work with data that you got from an experiment or like some sensors somewhere or whatever you will most likely always have um, missing data or some artifacts, some errors in the data. And um, there are ways that you can um, yeah, work around that using pandas. For example, you can treat the missing values as um, just not being there or you can um, fill them with some other values. And I will just show you um, some ways of doing this. Okay, so let's import our libraries first. And then first thing are missing values. So missing values, um, we've already seen them in NumPy. In NumPy, they were called NAN. And um, since Pandas builds up on um, NumPy, you can also use the np.nan um, inside Pandas as a missing value. And Pandas will understand that this is like the absence of a value and there's nothing there and uh, represent that in, in such a way. But since pandas 1.0, um, there's also a special not available um, object inside pandas, and it's called NA, like um, uppercase NA here. And um, yeah, these values can be used as um, yeah, representing missing data as well. And these also work for non-numeric data now. So since um, the NAN value from NumPy um, comes from NumPy and NumPy is best for numeric data. You will, uh, you can only use the NAN from NumPy with numeric data, but now the uh, pandas NA object can be used with any data type, and you can, for example, have um, yeah nullable booleans, for example, or null nullable integers, and uh, yeah that will work from uh, version 1.0 on. And Chris also mentioned a little bit of that in the last lecture. Okay, so we have a function pandas to check if some value is uh, not available. This function is called isNA, and this will return a boolean. You can also pass a series or a data frame to this, and then it will return um, yeah, a respective series or data frame with boolean values inside, indicating uh, where there are NA values. And you can see that um, np.nan is treated as not available by uh, pandas, as well as the NA object from pandas. But if we just use a normal number, this will tell us false, since the number 42 is not um, not available. It's an available number. So there's some data here. Okay, so how can we um, handle these missing values? Um, first of all, we want to have some data. So uh, we'll use the read CSV function to read this um, data frame, which includes um, yeah, cases and death numbers of the Ebola um, epidemic. And I guess this kind of data is quite, um, yeah, quite um, apparent right now since we live with a pandemic right now, as you probably have noticed. And um, yeah, we can already see that this data frame contains lots of NAN values. So for some of these countries, um, it looks like they're just only NAN values. We're just looking at the head here, so the first five rows, um, but yeah, you can see there are lots of NAN values and it's difficult to work with this because um, different functions, like for example, the sum function or the mean function, they treat these NAN values as missing and they just don't care about them in pandas, for example. But I will talk more about that later. But it's just difficult to work with this. So we want to get rid of that. And um, yeah, we can first of all look at the uh, actual numbers of NAN. Um, here we use value counts and set drop na, so drop na to false. So this will also include the NAN values. We can see for the um, cases Guinea, 
um, column we have 29 NAN values and then since we're just looking at the head of this um, yeah some uh, some other values as well but 29 NANs and that's yeah we can't really work with that so we have to do something about that and the most straightforward way <coughs> to do this is to just drop them so remove all the rows where there's a NAN value if we do this we see okay we're just left with one row this is not what we wanted and apparently the data frame only has one row which does not contain um, yeah, a single NAN. So this is not um, what we really wanted since now we only have one row and we lost pretty much all of our data. Then another way is to still use the drop NA function but then specify that uh, we only want to drop those rows that contain all NA. So all columns in this row have to um, contain an NAN value. If we do this um, yeah, we can see that now um, we have more data again, but then we still have lots of NAN values here. And now we don't have uh, rows which contain all NAN, which all contain NAN, but now, yeah, this didn't make things much better. So what are different ways to get around this and uh, still keep our data, but also have some way of working with these NAN values? Okay, so what we could do is fill these values up, but keep in mind that this will introduce artifacts. So whenever you fill up um, some missing data with some values, um, these are most likely not the real values that should have been there. Um, if there are values that can fit there, so make sure if you use these fill methods and then work with the data later on to keep in mind that there might be some artifacts and that the calculations might not be uh, like 100% correct. Okay, so the easiest function we could use is uh, fill na, fill na with a zero. So this will just replace all the na n values with, the, with zeros. And um, yeah, you can see this worked. We're just looking at the head again. So just the first five rows. And now all the na n uh, values became zero. Okay, so um, yeah, um, another way we could use um, the fill method is not using just a zero but having some more sensible um, fill values. One way we could do this is for example use the mean, the column wise mean. So we first calculate the mean of the columns um, using the mean function and as I already mentioned this function will just ignore the NAN values. So it will give, up, give us a value and for each column it will um, just not look at the NAN values but just take the values that are available. And then we can use these column-wise mean, column means um, and pass them to the fill in a method. And this will fill our missing data with the mean of the respective columns. And this is probably um, already a little bit more sensible. But um, for this like epidemics data set, for example, this could also be um, not really yeah, useful because this is like a time series. We have dates. Um, in at the first column and um, if we just insert the mean of the whole thing then we get these weird jumps in there and yeah this this doesn't make too much sense for our um, for our data set that we have here and um, yeah there are some more advanced algorithms such as expectation maximization but these are not uh, covered in the pandas uh, library directly you can uh, of course implement them yourself and there probably are also libraries that implement these uh, algorithms um, that you can use for this but um, pandas has just like some more basic functionality of uh, filling missing value missing values okay but some more functions there are um, so some more methods of filling values are for example the forward fill and it's a little hard to read with this font but this actually says f fill so it stands for forward fill and um, we can just specify this as the method in the fill in a function and if we use this um, you can see we still have lots of nan values but what this is uh, what this did is it um, yeah it looked at where there are nan values and if we have a value before this nan value it's just going to use that so since we're looking at the head here um, and these columns all start with nans it can't insert any values from above so it will always use, uh, always use the values from the columns above but it can't do that here because yeah, there are no uh, values above 
But for example, if we look at the tail now, um, the last five rows, then yeah, we don't have any n values here anymore because it just took the values from the rows above and filled them in. Um, yeah, so the other way around would be a backwards fill. This is also implemented. This is um, the method bfill. And this will just work in the opposite direction. So it will take the values from the uh, rows below and insert them as any n values above. So if we do this um, and look at the whole data set, we can see that now uh, at the bottom here, we still have any n values because the last rows have any n's and it can't take anything from below that. But now, um, like the top rows here, uh, don't contain uh, any n values anymore because it was able to use values that are somewhere in this data set and it propagates them up uh, through the rows. Okay, now coming to um, some more advanced filling uh, functions. There's this interpolate function inside pandas and interpolate just implements some more um, kind of advanced functions or methods of filling missing values um, using the values that you have around this missing value. So we have a look at this um, uh, case skinny column inside our data set, um, just the head of it. You can see that here we have three values, then an NAN and then another value. Now we want to fill this NAN value with some yeah, sensible um, value and um, we could do that with different methods. Uh, we could just use the average of the um, values around. This would be a linear interpolation. We could also use um, a quadratic function and fit this to our data around and then um, yeah, use the respective um, point on this quadratic fun function to fill this NAN value. We could also fit a cubic function. Um, we could use splines. There are different ways um, that we can do this. Um, if I have a look at this interpolate function in the pandas documentation, you can see here under the methods um, parameter, there are lots of uh, things you could use. And there are even things like uh, from derivatives. So this will compute the derivatives of your data and uh, use that to yeah, infer or interpolate what the missing data should have been. But um, the most useful are probably uh, linear and um, just these here. So using the nearest one, um, just inserting a zero just with the fill NA function. Um, yeah, using a quadratic function, cubic function, splines. Uh, you can fit polynomials to your data and um, all of that. So these are very useful uh, functions of filling data using the uh, filling missing values using the data you have around. So if we, for example, use this quadratic function here, we can see that uh, it inserted a value for the NAN and this is a float now so this doesn't make sense for a cases number um, but you can of course convert that back to an integer and we can see that this number probably kind of makes sense it's between the 2730 and the 2769 and it looks like it makes some more sense um, than just inserting the mean for example or some constant value okay and now what I've mentioned um, before is um, these functions that uh, pandas and numpy implement to do analysis on your data, um, like for example, the sum or the mean standard deviation and so on. Um, what numpy does is it will not ignore the NAN values, but it just returns NAN if you have one NAN value in your data. And um, therefore it implements some yeah, additional functions that can take care of the NAN values. So as you've seen already in this lecture, there are these NAN sum and NAN mean functions and so on. And these will also ignore NAN values. Um, and yeah, you can use them in NumPy, but these are the default functions for pandas. So if we have a look at this uh, column again, and we call sum on this, um, we already know that this column, this case is guinea column contains NAN values. But if we execute this, it does not give us any n, like NumPy would. So the default um, function in uh, pandas will not ignore any n values. Uh, it will ignore any n values. Okay, but of course we can also pass uh, the parameter skip na and set it to false, and then it will not skip the n a n values um, and have a look at them. And uh, yeah, the calculation will then return n a n because uh, yeah, the column contains some n a n values and um, 
a sum with an NaN value will be NaN.